Hey, what's going on? It's Caesar from The Sprint Project. In this video, I'm gonna show you three drills for improving sprint technique. Technically, this will be useful if you're doing any form of running, but it'll be especially useful if you're learning how to do sprints. If you're new here, welcome. Originally, I created The Sprint Project because I was looking for information on sprinting, but I couldn't find a place that had everything I needed, so I decided to build it myself. Now, let's get into the video. Before we get into the drills, let's quickly go over some of the most common mistakes. Sprinting can be broken down into three components, arms, legs, and posture. For arms, there are two common mistakes. One is not moving the arms enough. Two is moving the arms too much side to side. The problem with these mistakes is that what happens at the arms affects the legs. If your arms don't move through a full range of motion, then your legs won't either. So each step you take will be cut short and be much weaker. On the other hand, if your arms move too much side to side, energy is wasted that could instead be used to move your body forward. For legs, the most common mistake is landing far in front of your body on the heels. The problem with this mistake, besides the fact that the leg has to pull the center of gravity over the foot, is that when you land on your heels, your joints have to absorb majority of the impact on each step. Instead, when you land on the ball of your feet, your foot muscles, Achilles, and calf muscles lengthen and help absorb the impact of each step. In terms of posture, majority of us sit for a large part of our day, so one of the biggest problems is a rounded back. This prevents your lungs from expanding and taking in oxygen effectively, not to mention also prevents your arms from achieving a full range of motion. Now that we've established some of the most common mistakes, let's get into the drills. The first drill are seated arm swings. In my experience, this is one of the fastest ways to improve sprint technique because it's much easier to see what your arms are doing compared to your legs and posture. If you're at the track, you can sit down at the bleachers, or if you're at home watching this video, you can grab a chair and sit on the edge to perform this drill. Just make sure you sit far enough so your arms can move freely without touching the back of the chair. First, sit up straight, eyes straight ahead, then take a big breath and engage the core. If you're not sure what this is supposed to feel like, imagine if someone was about to punch you in the stomach so you filled your lungs with air and contracted your core as a shield. To begin, thumb to eye, elbow to the sky. I got this cue from Carl Lewis, who was nine times Olympic gold medalist. Then you can begin swinging your arms while keeping the core engaged. You can start off slow in order to build up the correct movement pattern. Then once you're comfortable with the movement, you can do it even faster and work on power. Here's how it's supposed to look like. Front of the body, when the hand is at the highest point, the angle at the elbow is slightly less than 90 degrees. As it comes down, the arm opens up and it becomes nearly straight at the leg then begins to close as it comes up behind the body here the elbow is the same height as your shoulder with the upper arm parallel to the ground if you can't do this that's all right over time as you practice this drill your shoulder mobility will improve for recovery do what feels most natural to you some sprinters recover with the arm below the waist some recover with the arm above the waist in order to get a faster arm swing my experience here's the difference between open and closed hands open hands allows you to feel the win against your palm which gives you a better mind to muscle connection close hands mechanically shorten your arm which allows you to pump them faster and increase the speed of each step here is how it's not supposed to look like you don't want to look down on your hands or up too high because where you look affects your posture you don't want a small range of motion from the front the hands should not cross the midline of the body if there's one thing you take away from this video it should be this the second drill I call straight leg bouncing. Unless you frequently walk around and exercise barefoot, the feet are usually the weakest link in the leg, which may lead to sore feet, sore calves, and shin splints. Simply put, because of modern day shoes, our feet are weak, and this drill is gonna help us strengthen them so that we can push off the ground with more power. First, begin on the ball of your feet. Next, without bending your hips or knees too much, push your toes into the ground and start bouncing. Then continue bouncing, but instead use only one foot at a time. Finally, move forward while bouncing on one foot at a time, adding in the arms. At this point, you're isolating your feet to do majority of the work, both to push you into the air and move your body forward. By training the feet in isolation, the power of each leg will be much stronger once you put everything together and are actually sprinting. Here is how it's supposed to look like. The big toe should be the last part of the foot to leave the ground. Immediately after pushing into the ground, the toes should point up. Landing should happen on the ball of the feet with only minimal bending at the knee or hips to absorb impact. Here is how it's not supposed to look like. Because we're isolating the feet, the knees and hips should not be bending and extending, otherwise they'll be helping to generate 
a large amount of the power. When moving forward, if your toes are scraping the ground, that's a clear indication that either you're not pointing the toes up at all, or you're not doing it fast enough. When moving forward, you should not be taking large steps or landing in front of the hips. This will cause you to lose a straight leg position. The third drill is called the A step. The main purpose of this drill is to improve your posture and teach your foot to strike back into the ground under your hips so that you are going with gravity instead of against it. To perform this drill, stand with your feet shoulder width apart, eyes straight ahead. First, take your foot off the ground with your toes pointed up, then tap your opposite knee with your ankle and relax slightly. Finally, bring the foot back down to the same place it was before underneath the hips. Once you get comfortable with the movement, you can do it faster, you can do both legs, add the arms in, and move forward. The easiest way to perfect this drill is to practice in front of a mirror or by recording yourself, which you can do using a water bottle as a tripod. Just make sure the water bottle is full. Here is how it's supposed to look like. Your power and balance comes from the leg that's on the ground, so make sure to contract the glutes. There should be a straight line from the top of your head to the foot. By having your toes pointing up, you prepare the foot muscles to strike the ground so that when it does contact, the foot muscles are engaged effectively. When you contact the ground, it should be with the ball of your foot first underneath the hips. Here is how it's not supposed to look like. You should not be leaning forward, backward, or to the side. If this happens, make sure you're contracting your glutes and core. They work together with the hamstrings and quads to maintain an upright position. If you're having trouble keeping the leg on the ground from bending at the knee or you're bending at the waist, then it's likely you have tight hip flexors. The hip flexors connect from the lower back to the top of the thigh. So if they are tight, they may cause your lower back to round and prevent your leg from extending completely. To summarize, seated arm swings are gonna improve your arm technique by isolating the arm movement. Straight leg bounces are gonna teach you to get full extension through the leg. And the A steps are gonna improve your posture and teach you to strike correctly into the ground. All of these drills, keep in mind that doing less reps with high quality technique is always better than doing lots of reps with poor technique. How you practice is how your technique will look like, so make sure that your practice is as perfect as possible. I think those are three of the most valuable drills you can do when learning sprint technique. Now, I'm not saying these are the best drills in the entire world. If you have any other drills that you recommend, feel free to drop in the comments. And I'm interested, what are you guys currently working on in terms of building your sprint technique or what are you currently struggling with? I think it'll be interesting for all of us to see what everyone else is working on, so drop in the comments. And thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.